I'm curious to hear your story, how you started out from a pastor getting into running for the lieutenant governor of North Carolina, getting into politics. The reason why you're probably running is because you're a Christian and you have the morals you have. Yeah, absolutely. You probably wouldn't be doing what you're doing if God didn't give you that that burn to do what you're doing, right? Yeah, um, I'd rather do something else. <laughs> exactly. It's messy, right? <clears throat> yeah, very much so. Even for me, not in politics, it's hard for me. It's kind of a burden just to be a truth teller, you know? More so today than ever. Yeah. What led you to that? Well, been pastoring for nearly 30 years. Really and truly, I've had an interest and followed politics for a long time, about all my life, since my teen years. But um, I really didn't start thinking about where I would fit in um, until we met Mark Robinson uh, a couple of three years ago. That's how we met, uh, really, Mark and started to spend more time with he and his wife. And uh, we became instant friends. And uh, started praying praying together and what we could do together and uh, how we could affect the state for right change. And uh, we had him here at the church helping with a, a project called American Renewal Project 2021. And uh, he gave a thunderous message here. We, we got launched into the spotlight. All of a sudden, we're being quoted and mentioned in the New York Times. And, and we're getting 40 and 50 calls on a Friday afternoon when the story broke so much that we had to unplug the phone here at the church. And um, so, again, that's a, that's a long story, but we started praying and how that could work. And um, you'd actually be interested in how Zach started praying about this, and I'll let him share if he desires, but he started praying about this specifically before I ever came about it. And you would, be, you would love that story. I would love and, it, yes. Yeah. Share the story. I love a good story about God. <laughs> Share the story, Zach. Okay, so like he said, 2020 was the year that we really started to get involved with the American Renewal Project. I think that we got involved a little bit before that, but 2020, we really hit the ball rolling on that. So as we are meeting with pastors throughout this, you know, that year, one of their main purposes of the whole meeting is prayer. Everyone needs to get together and pray. So at the end, before Mark Robinson walks out, everyone starts praying. So 2020, you know, my mind's just rolling. I'm thinking. And so I'm in my room. And I just had, it's almost like a burden that this is what I need to pray for. And so I get a group of three friends and one of them lived in Texas. I said, you're going to think I'm crazy. You're going to think I'm stupid, maybe. But let's pray that our family, specifically my dad, gets involved somehow in the political system. Now, I was already thinking lieutenant governor because, you know, at that time, everyone was like, we need Mark Robinson as governor. Well, who's going to fill that role? And I was thinking, well, my dad's literally just like him. But nobody knew that. And still people were still just finding that out. But me and my two friends, including me, it was three people. So we prayed that prayer for about two years before he ever even mentioned the thought of running for anything. And then little later, after praying, he sought out the role of lieutenant governor. But before he even did that, he went to a group of pastors, a small group of pastors, because we're into quality, not quantity. Yes. And so he said, be praying about this. If this is not what we're supposed to do, we want this door shut. We want all the doors to shut. Mm. We're not in this for ourselves. We're in this for a change. And since then, doors have opened up that could have never been opened up by his own doing or any of us. So I hope that gives you a better idea of how far we have come and how far we've been allowed to come. So, so basically, God downloaded that you know, drive that passion in your heart to even start praying for that because 
you know, I know from experience that when something comes out of left field and you don't know, <laughs> and it's not something that's coming from your own, you know, selfish motive, a lot of times it's a God thing, right? I mean, I remember when he told me to start my ministry, I just laughed and said, kind of no in a way. <laughs> and, you know, he had to correct me and get me on board, right? So yeah. and obviously that was a God thing, you know, downloading that to you. Um, that's amazing. I love that. And, you know, the world is just getting darker and darker. You know, we're seeing just what yesterday I just posted about, you know, this drag queen, what pride parade or whatever. And, you know, <laughs> those people look scary already. But anyways, you know, they were chanting in this parade, you know, we're coming after your children. We're coming after your shopping. We're coming after your children. You know, they're really mocking Christians. They're mocking the things of God. And it, the days of the silent church are over. Some people just say, oh, God's in control. And, you know, we know the end of the story. Yeah, we know the end of the story, but God has called us to take a stand. We have a purpose. We weren't, you know, born just to get saved, say the prayer, die and go to heaven, right? God has a purpose for yeah. us on this earth. And so we do need to take a stand. The devil's bolder and louder than ever. I mean, um, there was a picture of this guy wearing, you know, the, the popular... Uh, saying that we as Christians have not today, Satan, you know how we say that and yeah. you'll see shirts about that. This guy had a bath in it, which is a demonic, is a demon or on his shirt that said not today, Jesus. Yeah. And it had the pentagram. It's in your face now. Well, they're intentional and they know exactly what they're doing because I mean, the message that they're sending is direct and it's intentional, but what they don't realize on this side is that they're going to rue the day. They're going to regret the day that they ever did that because their time is coming. All right. And Leo, what we're seeing is, is Romans chapter one, verses 18 through 32 being uh, uh, unfolding right before our eyes, where God gives over people to a reprobate mind. Mm. And uh, that, that has a broad definition in, in one sense, because God gives them up there's no boundary. There's no limitation to their vileness or what they're capable of. But when God gives them up, he quits communicating with them. He quits offering them salvation. And so where that leads is Revelation 20 verses 11 to 15, when they stand before God and he's going to be judging them for their works and their deeds, and he's going to be punishing them accordingly. So they have no idea what they're doing. Um, uh, that doesn't mean that they're not, not responsible. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, they know what they're doing, but they have no idea of the implication that it's going to bring later. Right. But I've never seen it like this today. Oh, it's never, I've never been seen like it. this. Zach, um, you don't know this because you weren't raised in our generation or, you know, in the 80s, 90s. Social media didn't exist. There was Satanists. They hid in the basement. You know, they weren't out there. And now they're just bolder than ever. Now what you see is not the norm. Like this has only happened with the past few years that it's been getting to this point where now there's, you know, Satan shoes, uh, blood shoes, you know, in your face. And um, it's because the devil knows, his, you know, his time is coming and he's he's giving it his best shot, I guess, but God will not be mocked. And, you know, a lot of times when Christians see God and Satan in the boxing ring, and I hope God wins this fight. Who knows? It looks like it's a tie. But the truth is the devil has been defeated at the cross and, you know, it, it's not a fair fight. The Bible tells us that just a simple fact of Jesus making himself known in a situation, they would shudder and cry out, no son of God, don't cast me out. I mean, you know, so really th there's, it's not a fair fight. You know, it's not a fair fight. Might look like the devil is winning, but the devil has been defeated and he's not winning. He's just a mouse with a microphone, you know, he, he's really loud. So he seems intimidating, but he's really a mouse. You know, and we have the lion of Judah on our side and, and he will not be defeated. And so, Zach, what do you think about like your generation, you know, growing up with social media, growing up with all these demonic things and culture and entertainment? I mean, I can't even go on Netflix anymore without, you know, glorifying Satan or over sexualized movies. I don't even watch it anymore. There's nothing clean anymore, you know? And, and then even on top of that, like this whole uh, gender confusion, that wasn't even a thing growing up. No, you were no, a boy it, or a girl. It was obvious. Like, exactly. <laughs> I mean, and you said it right. It's confusion. 
And who's the author of Confusion? Right. Even like Riley Gaines being a person that would have to talk about her story, you know? There was no yeah. such thing as guys or girls participating in different sports that were not their gender. That was not it even was just, a thing. So it Zach, was a no like all these things that as, as part of your generation, I'm just saying like they literally did not exist. In fact, it blows my mind that, that they're even topics that we talk about because they're that far off. They're that illogical. They're that crazy of a thing. It's not even like a little shift. They're huge. I mean, those are things that we never even... It wasn't like it was a small portion of it and now it's more. It literally did not exist. I mean, it was yeah. common sense that if you're a guy performing guy sports and if you're a girl, you <laughs> perform in girl sports. I mean, that wasn't up for debate. That wasn't a question, right? So yeah, it was a no-brainer. Yeah, it was a no-brainer. The things that were no-brainers are now becoming what they want to push as the norm, you know? And so that's why, <clears throat> you know, I have this passion in this, you know. Uh, fire in me to stop this because I knew what it was like before all this happened. How is it for your generation growing up in this culture? And, and what do you feel like your purpose is and what God has called you to do? So you were just mentioning that, you know, your generation and yeah. our dad's generation is, you know, this is all new to us. Well, to us, this has always been here. Right. So we can't remember when everything was normal. We don't even know what normal is anymore. Right. I mean, there's you know, in a day and age where everybody's redefining stuff. I mean, we don't even have a real definition of normal. But, you know, I have a three year old brother at home. So, no, I don't have children, but I have siblings and I'm going to do whatever I can do along with my dad to, you know, just hold back the evil as much as possible. So, you know, I'm at the point where I'm sick of it because like you just mentioned, it is in our faces so much that it's either, you know, ignore it or fight it. And we're at the point right now where we're fighting it because, you know, Christians are not meant to be on the sidelines. Right. They say that uh, the younger generation, Gen Z is lost, but I don't believe that. They just, you know, they need <laughs> something real. That's true. I say it all the time. Satan's running these streets bolder and louder than ever. And we as a church need to speak up and stand up for truth and righteousness in this hour. And I tell people, if you don't have discernment, you're not going to make it because, you know, we live in a time where they're calling good evil and evil good. You're not going to know the difference. The enemy is just deceiving people left and right. So if you don't have discernment, you know, you're going to be walking in the flesh. You're going to be compromising. You're not going to be living the way that God has called us to live. And he's called us to be warriors in this hour. And it's not a personality thing. It's not introvert, extrovert. It's not, oh, Leah, that's good for you because you're bold and you're, you know, this and that. No, we can all make a difference. We can all speak up. You can share a post that is you speaking up, right? I mean, right. you don't. Not everyone has to be like me speaking at the school board and things like that. You know, God has called us all to, to say something, to do something and not to, you know, kind of hide in a box anymore, waiting for the rapture, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I, and I say that, you know, it's like a lot of Christians, you know, they go to church on Sunday and they have their golden <laughs> ticket to heaven. And then, you know, they're just waiting for Jesus to come back and take care of it all. And no, I agree. You know, I see yeah. that more and more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The culture has changed. So this is not a political battle. This is a spiritual battle. Right. I say that uh, all the completely, time. Completely. <laughs> completely. And, and yeah. let's expand on something you just mentioned a moment ago uh, about uh, demonic beings and stuff. And I don't want to get in, too in-depth in that. But um, I think we have to recognize the fact that uh, we have more demonic activity in the world today than we ever have. Um, and uh, that... Part of that is uh, there's less light from believers in the world. Right. Uh, not saying that there's less believers, but there's less light from believers. Mm -hmm. When you, I mean, oh, when I started preaching, I could hold a revival meeting as a young, a young preacher, and we would fill up the church. Um, people would come out. People would come to church and 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 be a part of it. Now, uh, I always say, if you want to have a, a fill up a church, you have a business meeting. You want to clean out the church, you have a prayer meeting. Uh, you see how many people actually show up. But the culture has changed, so it has it has to do with the amount of light in the world, the spiritual light, and then the the salt. 
uh, salt preserves a culture, and and we certainly, as a church, have not done our part as uh, being the salt. We like to say in the campaign that we want to raise that level of righteousness in, in our state because it's necessary. Well, people say that I'm very extreme right. I'm not extreme right. I'm actually where I, we we used to be. Right. Um, that's just my mentality. But the thing is, we've gone so far to the left that we're going to have to pull extreme right just to bring us back to the center again. Right. You know, it's not saying that it was perfect, but I almost want to go back to the 80s where the biggest concern was, you know, cocaine. You know, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> and I'm today, just, today uh, it's fentanyl. Yeah. I mean, now, now it's fentanyl. And now, you know, the, the enemy has allowed this open door with the border where they could just flood in who knows how many people. And not only are there countless you know, rapes with children and abuse with, you know, all these young people that just want freedom, you know, but now the fentanyl. And I personally know someone that's just a, was a teenager and, and during COVID was kind of depressed from being, you know, in lockdown, took one fentanyl. See, the enemy is making, you know, he's here to still kill and destroy and he's making it easier and easier. You don't, no longer do you have to have a needle in your arm or go buy, you know, a bunch of drugs and do crazy stuff to yourself. I mean, fentanyl is literally one pill can kill you, you know, yeah. and he took one, all he did was take it like an aspirin, one pill and he died instantly. And it was actually my nephew's best friend. And so, um, I've seen, um, the effects of, you know, that drug and, if you're someone, you know, and of course the enemy with all the crazy demonic things, of course, everyone's depressed. I mean, I have to fight not being sad by things I see, you know, I have to be in my word every day. I have to spend time with God every day because it's crazy. Even as an adult, I said this at the school board, but it's scientifically proven that our brains do not even fully develop until we're 25 years old. So when you're, you know, 14, 15 years old and there's a lockdown and there's demonic activity everywhere and there's all this gender confusion and all this, you know, demonic things happening in our culture, it kind of makes sense. But yeah, it's crazy. It's fentanyl now. And, and it's, it really is, it's really sad. And that's why we really have to take a stand and speak the truth. And another thing I was thinking, Alan, when you were talking about there's less light, uh, do you know David Barnett? Mm-hmm. So I went and saw him last year. He's really, you know, intellectual with uh, like statistics and he knows the facts and he's done a lot of, you know, a lot of research. He has his own um, organization. He said something that I remember my mouth dropped. It was at a, a, we went to a barbecue luncheon where he was there. He was a speaker and he said only 6% of Americans know their Bible and live biblically. So that just tells you one of the huge roots of our problem in our culture today. If only 6% read their Bible, know their Bible, vote their Bible, right? All right. Can't expect a moral. <laughs> I was just talking about that with uh, on the Jenna Ellis show about a biblical worldview. You, There's only two worldviews. They're either the, the humanist worldview where it's, you're your own God, you're your own final authority, it's all about you, it's your world, or there's a biblical world of you, and they're at odds. They can never cohabitate. Uh, you're either in one or the other. So that's your lens, going back to your title of your podcast, that's your lens mm -hmm. by how you see the world right. and how you judge and how you're able to make your decisions. So you know, how do you, how do you view the world? Do you view it through God's eyes or do you view it through your, through your own eyes? Right. Well, I, I view it through my eyes. I, I, there, there's no limitation to what I can do wrong right. because I'm my own God. But if I see everything in his viewpoint and uh, know that his word is absolute, see, we're living in a world where there's no absolutes. So his word is absolute. So and that's my moral guide. That's my moral compass. So uh, we, we've just lost our way in this country. And it's sad because God has blessed this country beyond measure. And we're still the greatest country in the world, bar none. Right. But if we want to remain great, we've got to come back to reality. Yeah, people that complain about our country, um, I want them to go to these third world countries. I've been to third world countries, okay? I mean, in China, you can't even have social media or you'll get arrested. So <laughs> I 
I'm just saying yeah. like, we have freedoms that people that don't know any, all they know is America. They don't understand how good we have it, you know? No, no, we, we, we don't realize how quickly we can lose it either. either. Right. Uh, and that's the sad part. Yeah. Well, we're going to wrap up soon, but uh, Zach, is there anything you want to say? Um, no, but <laughs> I will say this. We're not far from that. We're not far from losing everything that we've enjoyed for so long. And that's why it's important for people like me and you and our dad to get involved. And that's why he has done that. But, you know, podcasts like this, speaking out, and most importantly, what young people need to do is surround themselves by like-minded people, Christian people, and pray. Prayer is our greatest weapon. And it's our least used. Mm, that's a good word. Yeah. And they also need to get in their word and know their word. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, everything goes back to the word of God. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, it's false, you know? And so people need to get yeah. in their word. We, we've heard make America great again. And, and we all love that. But if we want to make America what made America great to begin with, then we get back to what made America great. And that was going to church, loving God, loving your neighbor. Uh, you can't replace that. There's nothing that replaces that. Amen. I just thank you for the opportunity and the graciousness and how you've uh, handled everything and, and your ministry here that, that the Lord has given you. And thank you for inviting us on. I hope that uh, we've been a blessing to you and you've been a blessing to us. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank yep, you. Thanks. Zach, do you want to pray us out? Sure. Yeah. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to come on the Lens of Faith podcast and share from our perspective and comfort and join forces with like-minded Christians and just strengthen the minds of your people because this fight is not going away until you come back and take us up. Please be with all the viewers. Please let them know that you died for them and you were the only way to it. Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Well, I'll be praying for your campaign. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Thank and you. I know, uh, you know, God has a, a plan for you, and I'm excited to see what's next for you. I'm just keep following everything you're doing. I'll keep you guys both in prayer, and um, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you again for the invitation. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye.